just went crazy, I think, and I also think I like that. Hey everyone, this is Matan, I'm the Hungarian ambassador of Oppo, and with me here today is the Oppo N3. This is my full review of the phone, so I finally got around to making it, and I've got both good and bad thoughts about it, but more than anything, I think it's a daring experiment. I believe Oppo was daring enough to go the go the route of maybe the Yota phone or the BlackBerry Passport for saying this is what a flagship used to look like until now, and now let's go crazy. And crazy they went. How well did it turn out though? Before I get into my review, I have to get something off my mind first. I've seen some reviews of the N3 by other YouTubers before, and I think most reviewers are flat out wrong about it. Why? Because they are used to reviewing a phone from the perspective of the tech enthusiasts who they think is watching their videos. I understand why they would do that, but it is the selfie lover or the average consumer who this phone is actually aimed at. When I showed the N3 to any of my non-techie friends, they all go nuts about the motorized swiveling camera. The N3 is actually the Oppo phone that all of my non-techie friends found the most exciting, and if you want to be popular with the ladies, I suggest whipping out the N3 in front of them and showing them how Beautify works. Seriously, prepare for long selfie sessions and them demanding to get all of the resulting pictures. I therefore think that Oppo hit the nail on its head with this weird feature, which Unlike many other innovative ideas, a lot of people actually instantly understand and enjoy. If you're interested in the camera of the N3, which you definitely shouldn't be in the case of a camera phone, then check out my camera review right here. I should appear somewhere here and I made a review of just daytime regular photography, nighttime photography, selfies, auto panorama, video uh, capabilities and everything else you could expect. If you want to see the rest of the device, let me start by giving you a tour of the hardware. With a screen size of 5.5 inches, this phone is now only slightly larger and heavier than most other flagships on the market, which is a welcome change from its gargantuan predecessor. It is now much easier to hold in one hand as a result, but at 192 grams, this phone is still noticeably heavy and a bit bulky. Making up for that is the build quality, which, just like we would expect from Oppo phones, is great as usual. Take the industrial grade aluminum alloy frame together with the unibody polycarbonate build and you have yourself a phone which is sturdy, easy to grip around the edges and just feels well built. It probably won't win the prettiest phone of the year award, especially with the faux leather and stitching around the camera which many people don't seem to find attractive, but I do think that the N3 is otherwise eye-catching and pleasing to look at too. The Skyline notification is as handsome as ever and now visible from both sides because of the striking gap between the metal frame and the phone. Sadly, however, it still only glows in one color. Right next to it is the bottom firing speaker, which is just average. On the front of the phone, you will see the display and three capacitive keys under it, menu, home and back. The display and the keys are covered with a very high quality screen protector applied straight to the factory that fits so well you probably won't even notice it being there without actually looking for it. A very thoughtful addition. Right above that is the speaker which does a great job at calls. I usually keep it on less than 50% volume and it's both clear and loud enough for me that way. On the right side you'll find your volume rockers and your eyes are not misleading you, the headphone jack. Why on the side of all places? Well, remember how the phone has its flashy new Skyline notification on the bottom and the rotating camera module with an actual motor next to it on the top? Those things mean that the headphone jack and actually also the micro USB port seen on the left had to move to the sides. Fair trade-off? Well, I will let you decide that for yourself. What's also on the left side though is a power button and an extremely cool SIM card tray slash micro SD card slot. Basically what you can do with it is either choosing to have two SIM cards at the same time making the N3 one of the very very few dual SIM capable flagships available or using one of the slots for micro SD expansion and adding to the 32 gigabytes of built in storage available on the phone. Very cool stuff here. Good news for the N3 is that it comes with unified storage out of the box, just like the R5 as well, and since the Find 7 also just received an update for unified storage, see my video about the update here, hopefully we won't have to deal with this problem anymore in recent Oppo phones again. On the back you have a 60 megapixel camera and a dual LED flash and this fun little area that is actually a clickable button and a fingerprint reader at the same time. Not the lame swiping type that you will find on Samsung phones, for example, but rather the iPhone style touch to unlock one. Now, I can already hear you say, fingerprint readers don't work, leave me alone, I don't want them on my phone, especially on Android, they suck, they're terrible, leave me alone with it. Not this one though, check it out. Okay, so I have a lock code on it, obviously, I also have multiple fingerprints set up, and I'm going to demonstrate to you the power of fingerprint readers on the Oppo N3. Check this out. Okay, I'm placing my finger on it right now. And with a click, boom, 
inside. So it's basically under a second and it gets my fingerprints about 90% of the time right. Cool. Overall, the phone feels really solid and premium in hand, just like what we've come to expect from Oppo. The metal frame is even more pronounced because of the gap, and it just adds a robust and cool feeling to the phone. The display is big, bright enough to use in the sun, has excellent and punchy colors, and good contrast. Plus, unless you have come to love QHD screens like I have, the Full HD resolution should be plenty sharp for you. The only downside to the screen is that blacks are fairly far from black, but altogether it's a great screen which would please anyone who's not specifically looking for QHD or AMOLED. Displayed on that screen, you will find Oppo's own take on Android called Color OS, which runs on top of Android 4.4.4 KitKat. As the name implies, it's a very colorful OS with lots of animations throughout the system. The dominant theme of the OS is a pretty elegant blur effect that is present everywhere from folders to notification, pull down, and even your own wallpapers if you wanted to. The system is also pretty heavy with features and bundled Oppo apps, some pretty useful and also lots of gimmicky ones, which at least can be turned off easily. Unique and useful to me are the screen off gestures, which let you draw shapes onto your screen to quickly launch apps or trigger actions like a flashlight, and small thoughtful additions like the network speed indicator in the status bar, or for example your data consumption written conveniently into your notification center. Much like with other Chinese manufacturers, the stock launcher has no app drawer, but it can of course be replaced by a launcher of your choice easily if app drawers are your thing. Tons of pre-installed Oppo apps come with this phone and they are all easy to use and look friendly, but somehow don't look as modern as we're used to from other manufacturers and Google itself. A theme store exists with tons of free themes available for download, so if you want to turn your phone into a pig thing, you can do so with just a few clicks. The Snapdragon 801 clocked at 2.3 GHz plus 2 gigs of RAM helped to run ColorOS as smoothly as you would expect it to. There are no signs of sluggishness of any kind, apps open up quickly and it all runs smoothly without issues. Mind you, more powerful processors already exist and I really think that Oppo should have gone with something like an 805 and 3 gigs of RAM for this price, but since the core audience probably won't notice and performance is very good anyway, I won't complain too much. Battery life on this phone is about average and with my pretty heavy use this phone lasts me a bit more than a day and I get somewhere between 4 and 5 hours of screen on time. Not bad actually, if you add rapid charging to that with the new and improved VOOC charger that charges your phone from 0 to 75% in just half an hour, you have yourself a phone that is pretty good on the battery front. As any Oppo user will tell you however, the company is very slow when it comes to updating their phones to the newest Android version and I suspect the N3 to be no different in this regard. Smaller updates for fixing bugs and introducing new features are pretty common and Oppo does have an active forum through which bugs can be submitted and new features can be suggested of which the most critical ones like the unified storage for the Find 7 for example usually get implemented. Still we have no news of when Lollipop will arrive for the M3 and I wouldn't be surprised if it took longer than most other flagship phones. To make up for the slow updates, Oppo practices a laissez-faire software policy that lets users root their devices and install custom ROMs on them without voiding their warranty. The company also actively supports custom ROM developers with devices for example, which results in a very strong custom ROM support for Oppo phones, my personal favorite feature of Oppo as a company. Another strong suit of the N3 is its camera, which should come as no surprise for a camera-centric phone. Again, I go in depth about it in my camera review right here, but as a summary, it first of all shoots great 16 megapixel photos in broad daylight, which capture tons of detail. Night photography is great too, especially in expert mode, which lets you manually set focus, ISO, exposure compensation, and wind balance. Sadly, slow exposure, one of my favorite features of other Oppo phones, is not present here, but I really hope it will be added in later updates. Selfies are as high quality as you can get on any phone right now, and beautification lets you apply cool filters in real time, which is a neat addition. The motorized swiveling camera actually works really well too, much better than I expected. Less impressive is the video recording of the N3, which as of now only supports 1080p at 30 frames per second. 4K recording is lacking then, plus video and audio quality are just average too, which is somewhat disappointing for a camera-centric phone. Still, vlogging will result in much better video quality than what you could expect from any other front-facing cameras. I again hope that Oppo will improve the video capabilities of this phone, as the sensor seems to be capable of great things, and it will turn the N3 into one of the best all-round camera phones out there. As of now, photo quality, especially selfies and vlogs, turn out excellent, and video is just so-so. So overall, I think the N3 is more than anything a very interesting device. Build quality is great and I can easily recommend it as the ultimate selfie phone right now, which is what this phone really tries to be.
$649 is actually a lot of money to ask for a phone which comes with an outdated CPU and an outdated version of Android actually. But if you take into account the rotating camera, the fingerprint reader, the dual SIM options, the fast charging and many other cool features, then I believe this phone does warrant some of its high price tag at least. I don't believe the phone is without its compromises, but I'm very happy that Oppo dared to make this very daring experiment. Thumbs up for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I suppose you did since you kept watching it until this point. And uh, therefore, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, my next video is going to be a full review of the Opal R5, this thin bad boy right here. So if you want to see that, subscribe to my channel. And also, if you speak English, which again, I guess you do since you watch this video, follow me on Google+. And if you speak Hungarian, follow me on Facebook also. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.